Yahar mateys! Welcome to the seas. This is Damn Rom. We're playing Sea of Thieves. We finally have a new voyage dedicated to pirate legends in Sea of Thieves that has just come out, The Legend of the Veil. Vale. This particular voyage is only going to be available to you if you are a pirate legend because you do need to pick this up from the Athena's Fortune hideout, which can be found below any tavern in Sea of Thieves. With that said, you don't have to be a pirate legend to partake in the voyage, but you must be a pirate legend in order Order to pick it up so if someone in your crew is a pirate legend they can certainly pick up the voyage and you can certainly tag along for the ride so we finally have a unique voyage that is tied to the pirate legends we've been asking for this for a long time and it is quite a fun little voyage it's got a lot of great things about it a ton of variation and as always I'm gonna cover this voyage in detail give you everything that you need to know probably little tidbits that some people have missed out on but as always I'll show you you how to complete this um, as efficiently as possible as well as going over some of the commendations so the first thing as always you're going to propose this on your captain's table just like we are any voyage so once you buy it from the pirate lord himself in the athena's fortune hideout you can place it on your uh, captain's table and now you will begin the legend of the veil vale. you will be joined by none other than the pirate lord himself upon your ship and after he talks to you for a little while he will then give you the legend of the veil vale book that we can now begin our journey and you will also get the veil vale of the ancients it will be placed on your ship keep in mind that that cannot be removed don't worry even if you sink when you come back that will be there so don't worry about losing that so let's talk about the book and the initial way this voyage is going to work because there's a lot of variation in this voyage with a ton of variation within each of those options so once you get the book you're gonna have one of those three options available to you and of those three I'm going to refer to them as Suds quest Bell's quest and the shipwreck graveyard quest and then at the end of doing two of those three options then you will go on to fight the haunted fort as the final portion of the legend of the veil vale. and the final portion is always static that portion will always be the same so the way that I'm gonna break this down down is we're going to go over the three different options one by one and I'll have everything timestamped for you so if there's a particular portion that you're trying to find check out the description in the comments as we get going forward so now we've read through the initial portion of our story and you can see that the first thing that I have gotten is Bell's Quest so I have Bell's Quest as my first part of my Legend of the Veil vale voyage and this is probably the easiest one because it just tells you exactly where to go it says Bell in this particular voyage is seen under a tall tree on Crescent Isle. So if you're doing this voyage, you should be well averse with the Sea of Thieves and know where the islands are. You know, for me, obviously Crescent Isle all the way on the west in the shores of Plenty. With that, I'll say where you begin this quest, where you place it down on your captain's table and you start it, generally where you're going to be going during the quest is going to be in that area. So if you want to be doing your quest in the shores of Plenty, then start in the shores of Plenty. This quest does not send you all the way over the Sea of Thieves. It kind of keeps you located in one area. So before we get started, let's just take a brief look at all the new commendations and cosmetics that have been added with this update in this new Legend of the Veil vale Voyage. So if you go to the Athena section of your pirate log, you'll see a bunch of new commendations, and these are the ones that are highlighted by the kind of gold rim. And there's going to be a lot of new commendations simply for completing all of the new quests, you know, 25 times each. You're going to have to defeat at least 50 of the ghost garrisons, and you're also going to have to complete this mission 100 times times to get the grade 5 Veil vale Seeker achievement. You'll also have to complete the mission 25 times with the grade 5 Athena Emissary, which is a little bit broken right now, but I'm sure they'll fix that. And then also there's several new treasury items, legendary loot that you're going to have to collect and selling 500 total of those is how you're going to get that final grade 5 commendation. And each of the new items have their own respective combination to be sold 50 times each. Also, if you head to the Athena's Fortune Shop, you will see there are new weapons to be had, as well as a few new cosmetic items that are tied to leveling up your Athena, which has been raised with this update to be from 20, now 30 is the max Athena level. So you can see that there. And then also, if you go back into the back of the Athena area, and you will see the legendary Liz back here, who will also have some new 
ship cosmetics that are available tied to leveling up your Athena rank from 20 to 30. And that's how you're going to get the Veil of the Ancients ship all those cosmetic items for that. So with all that said, let's get right into it. The first thing that we want to do before we you know begin this voyage is put up our Athena emissary flag. Not only is it tied to that commendation I just mentioned, but also we're going to get a lot more value for our loot. Keep in mind you do have to complete this voyage in one setting as this is not a tall tale. So if you log out, you'll have no checkpoints. All right, so the first of the three possible quest options that you can get that we're going to talk about is Bell's Quest. And this is probably the easiest in the sense of it's just very straightforward on where to go and what to do. Essentially, it's going to tell you exactly where to go. And on that page, it's going to tell you where, you know, where Bell was. So this one said she is at Crescent Isle under a tree. And this particular place is actually where the Moon Vault is. So if you go to Crescent Isle, that's the Moon Vault right there, which you've probably been to. You'll find Bell back here. Kind of sitting under a tree and then you will be able to talk to her speaking with bell eventually she's going to grant you the ferryman's lantern and the ferryman's lantern is now going to be used to find some you know ancient statues that are around the island that you need to light with this lantern now you can only see them if you have that lantern equipped so see i'm going to show you here if i pull out a normal lantern that statue is not visible so you can only see them if you have the lantern equipped and now what you have to do is light them. There are six different ones on the islands that you have to light and keep in mind this could be a different island for you but in my experience it's very straightforward. It tells you exactly where to go. It's really not any puzzle you know like mechanics. You just need to go where it tells you to go, find Belle and then once you've lit that one that's behind her there's five more throughout the island that you need to find and when you have your lantern out you'll see this beam of light that's shining up to tell you where these statues are located and as you get closer you're going to see that kind of you know aura kind of emitting from these statues and you just need to walk up to it and light that brazier so you can see i lit that one and now if i turn around you see all these four beams of light just going up into the sky so i just need to head over to those locations and continue to light these braziers until i have lit all six and again there are six of them they can be in different locations so even if you come back to crescent isle the location of these statues could be in different places and they can also be inside of caves so you may see the beam of light going up out of the ground but if you go there and it's not there think that it could be below you okay so keep that in mind and once you have lit in all six now you will see a larger beam of light kind of shooting up into the sky and creating this large aura in the sky so you can see that up there almost a sea of the damned aura just shooting up into the sky and that's going to lead us to our final kind of ancient statue and when you go up to that ancient statue you'll see some ancients kind of surrounding it um, you're going to see that right here. So that was pretty cool. This is kind of the first time you're going to see some ancients in the game. But essentially, you need to walk up to this final kind of ancient statue, light the brazier. And what that's going to do is that you're going to start into a battle where you're going to face waves and waves of phantom enemies. And these, you know, ancients are actually going to help you in the fight, which is pretty cool. And don't worry, you know, you can actually hit them with your sword, but you can't kill them. So don't worry about that as you're fighting. They will help you out. They'll take out some phantoms for you. But essentially, as you progress, through waves and waves of these enemies eventually a soul fame uh, soul flame he's not famous a uh, soul flame captain will join into the battle and you'll need to kill him to kind of end this phase now the phantoms will keep spawning until you kill him so just focus on him keep in mind that these final locations are static while these six initial braziers can be in random locations this one will always be located next to an ammo crate so keep that in mind there's always going to be ammo for you during this battle um or at least least somewhere around this fight so once you kill the soul flame captain he'll drop some athena items for you to pick up be sure you pick them up before you get the veil stone uh, there is a glitch right now sometimes if you grab the veil stone first and put it into your you know veil mask on your ship your items could actually disappear if you haven't touched them yet i'll touch on that a little bit later nonetheless once you have killed the soul flame captain now you can go back to the uh, ancient statue and you will have an ancient handing you the veil stone and that's pretty cool it's pretty cool moment just to have all those ancients there but anyway take that veil stone back to the veil mask that is on your ship and you will be able to place that in the mask 
and that will actually end Bell's quest. Now keep in mind, this could be your first or second quest, or you may not get this set at all. There are three options, two of which you need to do. So the only variability really to this is where you may have to go. Finding the statues to light are very easy, but you can go anywhere depending on where you start the quest. So right here, it said Shipwreck Bay. She's on the Southern shore next to the buoy, right? easy to find these are very easy the next type of mission that you could possibly get is the shipwreck graveyard mission and that's right here you're gonna see this in your journal as the shipwrecks on the right hand side of the screen and it's gonna tell you where it is so it's gonna say no you know for me this particular one said north of crooks hollow so you need to basically just go where it's telling you to go the only real difference between finding these and a normal shipwreck in the game is that the birds above these are smaller in the sense that they are the size of the birds you would see above a barrels of plenty also with this particular one you will always have a ship's hull sticking out of the water so you shouldn't have too much trouble finding these the variation in this particular mission or this part of this voyage is that the shipwrecks the number of ships that can be in the graveyard and their placement in the kind of graveyard itself can be variable and I'm gonna make that very easy for you in a little bit but your first task with finding grim fortune which is always the white ship and when you go in there what you're looking for is the ship's logs and and these can be on a shelf, on a barrel, wherever. Just look around the ship and that can be random. So it's not like I can say go here and find it. But essentially, once you find the ship's log, now pages are going to be added to your quest book. And if you go into your quest book, now it's going to say, oh, we have safely placed the key among one of these ships. For me, in this particular playthrough, it's saying it's aboard the Golden Star. So that can be any of the ships that are in the graveyard. What you need to do is find the ship that corresponds to the one it's telling you to and if you go to that ship now you have to you know look for the key you have to move paintings move pillows look in barrels kind of look all over it can be under tankards it can be in cabinets or dressers anywhere it can be randomly placed in that ship and once you basically find the key now you can go back to Grimm's Fortune to open the captain's quarters so for me in this playthrough I ultimately found the key inside this music box on the bottom level of the Golden Star once you have the Grim Fortune's key, now you can head back to the Grim Fortune and open the Captain's Quarters. Opening the Captain's Quarter is where you're going to find the first chest right in front of your face is going to be the chest that holds the next Veil Stone. So you can take that back up to your boat. There will be some Athena items in that Captain's Quarters as well. There will also be some Athena items just scattered throughout the shipwreck, so feel free to explore. But you don't have to if you don't want to. You can simply get the Veil Stone from that chest in the Grim Fortune's Captain Quarters and place that into your Veil Mask to continue the quest. So that's basically it. But I want to give you some tidbits to help you go through the shipwreck portion a little bit faster. Although the number of ships and their location can be different, the color corresponding to the ship's names is static. So the Grim Fortune is always the white ship. And this can help you speed things up because you don't have to basically looking for the ship's names. You know that the red ship, for instance, is always Crimson Revenge. So if it's telling you to go there, just look for the red ship. The green ship is always Queen's Envy. So if it's telling you go there, just look for the green ship. And also the purple slash blue ship, that's going to be our seaward glimmer. And the yellow slash kind of faded gold, I guess, or a sunken ship, right, is the golden star. And the brown ship, the final possible ship, is going to be Raven's Plunder. So this is pretty cool. You know, it's kind of a tribute to Arena being dead, I guess, now, because you got all the different colored ships in this area. But hopefully, knowing that the ship names and the color of the ship is a static thing will help you find the key faster also you don't even really have to find the ship's log in order to find the key if you find it just by kind of scouring around you could do it that way um, and there's also a commendation for that so moving on the third possible quest that you could get is Suds Quest. And of Suds Quest, the first thing that you're going to have to do is find Suds. And it's going to tell you exactly where he is. He's going to give you a clue. So right here it says he's on the Crescent Isle on the Eastern Shore. So you're just going to go over there. And basically, it's going to tell you exactly where he is. So he can kind of be anywhere in the map depending on where you started this quest. Again, generally everything is going to be very close to wherever you are on the Sea of Thieves. So once you find him, you just need to go up to him him, press X and he will add 
pages to your book. Now, keep in mind, he can be on different islands and he, he can also be on different locations on those same islands. So this is Crescent Isle again, but this time he was up on the rocks. Either way, once you get the pages from him, he's going to give you three possible options to complete his quest. One is X marks the spot. One is a pictures quest and one is a rock painting quest. We're going to go over those each one by one and we'll start with the X marks the spot map, which is, you know, basically an infinite possible possible uh, amount of scenarios that can happen because it can be any X anywhere in the Sea of Thieves. The only difference is that this X is going to be super zoomed in. So you can see here, I have this X and you're kind of like, uh, what island is that? So you need to kind of have, you know, familiarity with the Sea of Thieves and what the islands look like to make this a little bit easier. I know if I zoom in, where it's pointing me to is Mermaid's Hideaway. But again, there's an infinite number of possibilities because these are essentially X's that can be on any map and that is going to be zoomed in so you just have to be familiar so this is another example that we got so you can see that x is corresponding to sailor's bounty so if you see you zoom in that's kind of what your map looks like so these are highly zoomed in they can be anywhere and there's just an infinite number of possibilities because the x could be anywhere on a map and then it's going to zoom on that location nonetheless once you dig at, uh, that chest up you're going to get your next veil stone to place in your mask and and then continue on with your quest. The second option that he can give you to find his chest is the picture quest. And these are a little bit more challenging because you're gonna have pictures on the left and those pictures on the left are gonna to correspond to an island. So this one has a wooden gate, it has a you know cage hanging from a tree and then it has some flora where you're looking way down into a hole and that is actually corresponding to sunken grove so there's a bunch of these possibilities and what you have to do is say okay the left is sunken grove and then you have to match the right side of the screen with something or the right page to the island itself so you can see i'm looking down this hill there's that rock right there and there's an ancient symbol right in front of the rock you can see the you know rowboat off in the distance near the shore there so that's right here so i know Know that that ancient symbol right in front of this rock is where I need to dig so I'm gonna whip out my shovel go in front of that rock and I'm gonna dig that up and that's gonna be the chest now these are some of the hardest ones because you have to figure out where you are but also the dig spot can be different so see this is sunken grove as well but now the dig spot is actually in front of that rowboat so the dig spots are not always the same you can't look at a picture and say okay I know exactly where this is you have to find the island and then the dig spot could be different a couple different examples just to show you so this one you can see a snake kind of painting on that rock up there uh, on the right hand on the right hand side there's an intersecting path but the left side is corresponding to snake island so I know I need to go to snake island and now I have to find the area of snake island that corresponds to the right side of the page so you can see my buddy just dug right here perfect timing I said oh this looks exactly like it right at this crossroads and here he comes another example this one if you happen to get this one one. I'll just show you the few that I've seen so far. You can see the well. That should be pretty noticeable. You have Wanda's hideout down there at the bottom. That's going to correspond to Wander's refuge. Another example, this is a pretty easy one, I think. You know, on the left-hand side, you see the bridge going between two rocks. And on the very bottom of that, you can see those two rocks. Uh, very nice. That's a very classic area in Sea of Thieves that's corresponding to Smuggler's Bay. So you should have no problem with that. This one's a little bit more challenging. You have the Kraken Skull a large rock and a small cave entrance uh, that's actually going to be corresponding to crooked mass so there's a ton of possible examples of these sketches that you could get um, where you're going to have to essentially find that island based on the pictures on the left and then the right side you're going to have to find that area in order to dig that up and the right side where that chest could be that's an infinite number of possibilities Nonetheless, when you do dig it up, that's how you're going to get your next Veilstone. And I'm hoping to kind of make a, you know, a supplement video to show you all of at least the sketches corresponding to the islands. The last possible thing you could get from Suds is the Rock Painting Quest. And this one is very challenging because you're going to get an island that's unlabeled and it's going to have a bunch of symbols on it. The first time you get this, you're probably like, what the hell does this even mean? But essentially what it is, it's all the rock paintings, or not all of them, but most of the rock paintings that are on 
on that island. You're probably only going to get this quest in the Ancient Isles section of the game because that's where the islands are that have, you know, paintings on rocks that were placed by the ancients. And your job is to find the one that's incorrect. So when you look at the map, if you go to those areas on the island and you find that rock painting and it's the right rock painting, then that's not where you dig. So this particular picture, I know that the bot that, you know, where I've circled in red, if you go to that location at Shark Bay Cove, which I'll show you, the drawing does not match the actual rock painting. So I know that's where the treasure is. And I'm going to link an interactive map here because it way, you know, way better than running around and looking at all these. There's an interactive map on Rare Thief that you can use where he's got all of the rock paintings on the islands that you can click. So you can look at your map, you can click his icons and see which ones match and which ones don't. And what you can then do is go to the one that doesn't match. So here I am on the southern portion and I say, okay, that doesn't match, right? This one has a squiggly blue line with two kind of black triangles and an ancient symbol above it. Well, no, right here, it's two guys drowning underwater. So I know that's where I need to dig so I can dig up that chest and get my last veil stone. Now, whichever of those two of three options that you got, you will inevitably have two veil stones in your mask and the final portion, the haunted fort, will always be the same. Once you've placed two veil stones, you will then have the final pages would say you need to find the fort and retrieve the final veil stone and it's going to tell you where it is but you don't really even need to look at that because there's going to be a large kind of teal blue twister that should be in the distance it shouldn't be too far from where you are and that's where you need to go so it's pretty obvious just look for that and now you're going to enter the final battle of this really fun voyage and this battle is pretty fun it's a little bit difficult solo but it can be done i'll show you some solo strats in a later video but essentially when you come here this large twister is going to be shooting bolts at these encampments that are on the outskirts of the twister itself and there's three encampments that you're gonna need to shoot you can shoot it with cannonballs blunder bombs fire bombs whatever you want to shoot out of your cannon just go ahead and shoot those and they take five shots and after you hit the encampment with five shots it will basically obliterate which is pretty cool and explode it'll even like push your boat a little bit if you're close to it but there's three of those that we need to take out with the twister itself you know you can't do anything the final garrison is in there so you can see my teammate is shooting at that twister but you can't hit anything in it yet in fact you can't even get close if you try to sell your boat into that you will meet an invisible wall and you'll just kind of stop it won't damage you you'll just kind of be stuck there so what you really need to do is just focus on those three encampments that are on the outskirts there's also going to be some ghost ships around but you don't really need to focus on them in fact don't at all because when you take out the encampments those ghost ships will automatically disappear and they will just continue to come and harass you if you're trying to focus on them and just wasting cannonballs but essentially when you take out all three of those encampments now the twister will dissipate and you will be able to go into this large garrison fort and what you want to do with this is just get really close okay because if you're kind of far away you're going to be getting shot at by ghost ships and you're going to be shot at by the garrison but if you're very close to the garrison itself and just kind of circle around you can essentially just light up the garrison and there are essentially sections of the garrison that you you have to shoot five times in order to break that section of the wall if you're on a sloop you really only have to shoot like three times but the areas that you need to shoot on the wall are going to kind of have this subtle green hue to them so you know which areas still need to be damaged so just circle around stay close have one person build rat another person steering and another person laying the heat with the cannons and you should be able to take this out pretty easily it's not too hard if you're working together but once you take out the garrison the storm Storm will dissipate and you will actually be able to walk onto the garrison itself and when you get to the top you will find your beloved Athena loot you're gonna find your ancient chest in that is gonna be your final veil stone and there's an important thing I'm gonna tell you about that in just a minute but you're also gonna have an Athena chest and a bunch of ghost loot that's gonna be the final thing the only thing that you need to do now to finish the quest is place that final veil stone into the mask now before you place that veil stone at least now into the mask take the treasure that is in that chest out and put it on your boat right now some of you may have realized that some of your athena treasure has been disappearing that is because if you place the veil stone in your mask sometimes there is a glitch where the athena loot that's in that ancient chest will disappear so be sure you take it out 
put it on your boat before you place the Veilstone to complete the quest. I'm sure they'll fix that in a later update, but for now, be careful, and hopefully you all found that helpful, and as always, hopefully I'll see you on the seas.